Hey guys, welcome to Feature Creatures DTF. I am your host, Jordana, and I'm joined by our other host, Sam. Hello. Hi. I'm so, so excited to record tonight. It's been a hot minute. Yes, yes. It, we, we had to take a little, a short hiatus, but it felt like a long hiatus. I know. I felt it just as much. I, I I'm just so happy to be chatting face to face with you tonight and catching up and doing our thing. I feel like Roger Rabbit, like when he bounces off the walls, like uh, <laughs> that's how I feel like right now. Like I'm excited. <laughs> I don't even know what we're, this is such like a free form episode. Like, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but I can't wait to do it. And I can't wait to make it overtly horrendous and, 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 uh, uh, you know, you know, and like fart jokes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, because we need a good fart joke. <laughs> always, always. Um, so what's yeah. what's up? I, I know you said you, you've had some things that you wanted to talk about on your mind. So I had one that I and it's not like we're, we're going to we're going to talk before we get into like what we're you know discussing tonight. But I had something that I wanted to like, I think I might have sent it to you, but I wanted to ask you about it live right now but did you see oh no you sent it to me <laughs> about uh kitchen nightmares oh yes yes the best fucking news uh i've had all month so excited so yeah uh and just to be clear on that uh kitchen nightmares <laughs> is returning to fox for the first time in 10 years um yes, yes. and i told you i was like I don't know if we're doing an episode on it, but in some way, shape or form, I am going to be reviewing at least the debut episode or the, the re premiere yes. because both of us, we've talked about it. It made both of our lists of uh, when we did our TV episode of like favorite reality TV shows. It's actually, and I believe it's, I mean, it's hard to remember when we went back, but I think I added it. Number one, it's, it's yeah. my, I love that fucking show. I, you know what I think we should do if it would even be possible is we should do a live watch of it. I would be so down for it. I'd have to look into I see people do I've literally seen watched people on Twitch do reviews yes. of Kitchen Nightmares older episodes, but I don't know if maybe they're just like nobody gives a shit because those are 15 years old, you know. <laughs> like, I, I'm telling you, I still watch those and we're currently on season 10 of Hell's Kitchen on Tubi, and it is fucking ten thousand times better when you can hear them swear because it's not censored. Oh, I bet you. Yeah, just to hear how angry he is. And I like Hell's Kitchen, but it's more game showy. I, I so much more prefer Kitchen Nightmares because, you know, it's just him. You know, you just you just look at these. It's like, I don't know, just him yelling at a regular person is so much more satisfying to me than him yelling at like someone who was a contestant. Like, I don't know. Like and also like you deserve it. Like you're serving people this fucking garbage. Like I can't, I can't even watch it when I'm eating because I'm just thinking like how many places have I gone to where I've been served that shit? Oh, I I, I don't get squeamish about it at all. I have like, well, for, I mean. Now it'd be different. Be uh, uh, just full disclosure here. I'm on a super intense diet, so now I'm eating an apple when I'm watching it. But I <laughs> used to be like, I'd be like watching, you know, eating a like a pop tart or like you know a frozen pizza, and then I'd be like, ah, oh, you bitch, you put the chicken next to the fucking fruit. You can't do that. He's gonna get you. <laughs> like well, even you like, dumb bitch. <laughs> you stupid asshole. When they walk into the fucking coolers, and you would just like see their initial reaction of like stank and like the shit that's in there oh what? yes I, I and i mean and i hate looking into any reality tv show because like even at the time of those shows like 75 percent of those restaurants went under uh and, and now that the years have gone on i think there's like literally like of those that he did i think like 12 are still in business the one guy committed suicide because <laughs> I mean, just being real here, one of the most successful ones he ever did was, if you remember the one where he, he took a restaurant, he turned it into a meatball restaurant. Vaguely. Yeah, and like it turned out to be one of the most successful like after the thing, but yep. the meatball success went to his head and the dude started sleeping with the hostess who was in the show and then his wife caught him and he jumped off a bridge. 
Uh, Holy shit. I'm not going to laugh at that, (laughs) but (laughs) you could take, you know, listeners, you could take that for what it is. Uh, If you're the type of person who might find humor in that. Have with it. Have with it. it. (laughs) (laughs) But like tonight on Kitchen Nightmare, or yeah, uh, Hell's Kitchen, I was in the kitchen making my sub and I said to Greg, I just, because he's, he was losing his shit and he's like, fucking fuck, because this is, I think, one of the worst seasons because they did not have a good dinner service. And there's, I think, seven left. Like, you should be on top of your game with seven contestants left. You know oh, what I mean? Like, yeah. And I, I was like, this is just so great being able to hear him. I said, I wonder if anyone's ever done a tally of how many times he said fuck. And as soon as I said that, he's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, get the fuck <laughs> out. And I was like, I like get my hands up. I'm like, this is great. Uh, it's great. And then I love when he like genuinely like, and he, I know he does, he's not, he does it more with Hell's Kitchen with the kids version. Yeah. But, um, or yeah, is that Hell, is that the one Hell's, is there, no, he has the one with the kids. Oh, uh, Master Chef. Is that the one where he's on? Oh, where, he has one with kids and I, I, I doubt that the kids co is, show is called Hell's Kitchen. All right, I got to look this up here once real I, quick. He has, you know what else, other show I watched of his that I actually really like and it's only season two is Next Level Chef. Okay, it is Master Chef. Uh, yeah. Next Level Chef. What's, I don't remember that one. So the concept is crazy. It, there's a basement, a middle, and a top level. Oh, you did tell me about this one. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, it sounds like, to me, it sounds like, I'm like, this is a cooking show. You guys are overcomplicating this. <laughs> well, they had to like cook with n- like the shittiest of shitty utensils. And I don't know. It's just like, I feel like I do that anyway. Like <laughs> all these fancy u- utilities upstairs and I'm, you know, with my basic kitchen <laughs> oh Try. i all the time having how many times have i like you know like oh yeah I, I gotta you know you know you're supposed to you know scoop something up with like the prongs or whatever and i'll just yeah. grab like a big fucking spoon and just like, bam, like <laughs> fucking tear it from like asshole to elbow like as i'm lifting it up like, i did that yeah. just the other day i was now again veggies i was eat. i was making these like it's like a cauliflower popper like jalapeno popper thing and like oh. just destroying them as they were coming off the sh- <laughs> off the thing because i'm like i'm like i don't have prongs i'm sorry so like i'm just gonna have to just just mush them like <laughs> <laughs> are you liking the vegetables are you, are you liking like the transition or is it kind of just a pain in the ass uh totally the easiest part of my diet uh the worst part of it is the is the no beer um mm-hmm. i am uh uh, very much praying that uh, I can uh, very soon go back to one. Uh, I, well, let me rephrase that. Not go back to. I admittedly was drinking like three nights a week, which not good for losing weight. So <laughs> I uh, would like to go to just one night a week. Um, but I have to hit my target, which fifty uh, percent there. So I'm so proud of that, and I'm so proud of you because pat me patting myself on the back here <laughs> because losing weight <laughs> as you get older is not an easy feat. Mm-mm. Sucks, and but. that's why I wear this tonight. I want pizza, not your opinion. <laughs> yeah, but if you eliminate like ten beers and uh, a, a night three times a week, that takes like thirty five hundred calories <laughs> out of your diet. So it helps. <laughs> um, I know but, it's crazy, but uh, I'll be back. Um, either <laughs> well, way, I, sorry. I think our show is named Drinks, Tangents, and Flicks because it doesn't specify what drinks. Yeah, yeah. So right now I'm rocking the, the old seltzer water, but the one night a week may, when it comes back into rotation, may this will probably be that night. Yes. Um, yeah. So I'm super excited for uh, for Top Chef to come back, or not Top oh, Chef. Oh, there's uh, our Hel- special Hell's guest. Kitchen. There's Ripley. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Finish your treat. Okay, you're gonna be an annoying little asshole for the rest of the show. Of course you are. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I had to say that because I saw I saw his shadow jump up and I see his little head poke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's gonna be him. That's just what he does. So he's yep. like, oh, he's gonna fight with the blanket now. All right. Yep. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I'm super pumped for that. Uh, I actually would really like them to revisit like the twelve that they like haven't, you know, done. I'm just oh. I hope this gets more than one season. It has to get more than one season. I think there's so many people like us who love who loved that show. 
Yes. And I also, too, I wanted to tell you when we were heading out to our friend's birthday party the other night, I put on some random show for Wolfie because I don't like leaving him with nothing in the dark. Yes. Or not in the dark, but like with nothing. And I turned on the show that you talked about where he goes in disguise. Oh, like the, the, the kind of crappier version of kitchen nightmares yeah yeah and he was the uh he was like a family like the griswolds that was like the first episode and i put it on and i was dying because the the waitress gave him attitude and he was sitting there in this like old man get up and i was as i'm walking out i was fucking dying i'm like this is ridiculous it was i believe it got canceled but like it was the first seven minutes of that show were the best thing on TV because it's him in like clearly like a fucking terrible <laughs> outfit with a camera crew. Like there's no way these people don't know what's going on. And yeah. then like, I remember like sometimes he would bring like an ultra celebrity, like he had like Rob Gronkowski with him. And I think it was in like a Boston restaurant. And I'm like, don't fucking tell me that every single person in this bar doesn't know who Rob Gronkowski is. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's ridiculous. Yeah, but uh, the rest of the show was just like a much more rushed and honestly just shittier version of Kitchen Nightmares. I, I I have to believe that they canceled that show and we're just like, what are we doing? Just bring the show that worked back. There's tons of shitty restaurants out there. Let's go. Absolutely. And I'm here for it. That's I'm I'm so stoked because I'm at the end of my and I wanted to ask you, too, if you heard anything about Scandaval. Oh, uh, Mr. Thomas Scandival of Vanderpump Rules fame. Did you see that eruption of like madness? Do you know how happy I am? <laughs> you are going to have to tell me because I don't know. Li- okay, I've li- well, if you if you're a new listener to this show, I learned who this man was <laughs> like two weeks before you told me about this show, which apparently is a phenomenon. And he just happened to be at a bar near me doing like a photo or um, like a, you pay to take a picture with him. Yeah. Um, and remember I told you like, there's like a couple, the only reason I saw it is like a, is a person I know, like got engaged in front of him. Yep. That's the first time I met him or met him, uh, found out about his existence Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, you're like, this is my favorite show. And then like (laughs) a week after that, like all I see is just everybody on it. uh, Pretty much every female on like my Facebook feed between the ages of about like 25 and 40 are like, fuck Tom (laughs) Scandal. And I was like, what happened here? I know something at a music fest and that's it. It is honestly it like. You know how much I love that show. And Mm -hmm. it came on and, you know, everyone said it wasn't doing good. So they think that this was, you know, pre-planned or whatever. But so he was dating this girl, Ariana, on the show. And I've watched the show since it started in 2010, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been like part of their relationship for the (laughs) nine years that they've been together. (laughs) So I just it, love the, the expression there. Yeah, I'm part of this. Don't worry about it. Like, come on. I know these guys. I've watched them. You know, I'm, I'm part of their life. So this chick, Raquel, a.k.a. Rachel, because it's her real name, is on the show. Well, she's and already crazy. I can tell you that by just that description you've just told me right there. See, you <laughs> totally get it. You completely understand it already. So <laughs> that's one of Ariana's best friends. Like, she comes to be extremely close with her. And they... Tom and her were having an affair for seven months and Ariana. Okay. So he does like um, this horrible um, uh, concert. Like he sings covers, but they're fucking horrible. And he thinks he's like the best. He has like a lightning bolt jacket and he sings. Is it like a on purpose thing? Is it kind of like steel Panther? If you know who that is, like where they like, they know they're all like 60, but they're pretending that they're like still like, 80s hair metal kind of shit is it like is it on purpose like he knows it's good or is he like he genuinely thinks it's good so i love that reference because i know exactly who they are but no no, he thinks he's genuinely this good like he's paid for this band he like is totally invested in it and people were into it beforehand so at the show his phone fell out of his pocket and ariana found or they handed it to ariana and on there was uh a screen time recording of Raquel and him diddling themselves to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ariana finds it and st- uh, 
taping for the show was done in like 2022. So they went back and reshot. They like started filming again. And I'm telling you what, Sam, like the season finale was last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Holy fuck. That like, that was my Super Bowl. It was, (laughs) it was crazy. And then tomorrow night's the reunion and Greg and I are having like wine, cheese, snacks, like. You're, you're going all out. Yeah. I'm really excited. And it sucks because it's at the expense of, you know, their relationship, but it's sad. It's kind of sad to see. They signed up for it. So, yeah. And it happens all the time. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm just excited for the reunion tomorrow. I can't wait. It's, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's my favorite show and I'm glad that it's making a comeback, whether it's fucking pre-scripted or not. I'm here for it. And I love how everyone hopped on the Vanderpump train. I mean, in the, in the end, Obviously, the likelihood of it being scripted is probably, but who gives a shit? Everything's scripted. So, like, right. that's right. like me and pro wrestling when people are like, you know, it's fake, right? I'm like, so is fucking die hard, but I still like that. Like, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's me like, you know, it's just so I, I get that 100%. Um, I just, I'll say, I don't like when reality shows throw it in your face that it's fake. Like, yeah. Or even real, like anything like I, same thing with wrestling, like and which is why it's difficult to like it now, because a lot of it is just like so blatantly like this is fucking we're jacking each other off. Like, uh, <laughs> but like, uh, like what you told me about the show, was it the hills where at the end of the show, they're like they pull the set back and they're like, this was all fake. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> like Honest, It was the worst thing I, ever. I was just like, this is the stupidest way to fucking end the show. Yeah, just let me keep pretending like to have that that I think it's the it's the the molecule of 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 suspension of disbelief that lets you get sucked into these things. Like you know that it's probably all bullshit, but there's that little part of you that's like, but maybe it's not. And then yes. if you just say it is, it then it makes it all kind of like, eh. Yeah, because now they ha- all have podcasts that were on it and they're like, yeah, that wasn't re- there was it wasn't real. Well, no shit because the end they fucking showed it. <laughs> so why are you making thousands and millions of dollars talking about shit no i 100 percent agree it just that that would it irk me so i i would like them for your sake and everyone's sake they seem to be really into this angle i hope that they keep the show going but just if it's all bullshit don't ever let anyone know just play right. it that it's real for the rest of your life and and you'll be fine yes but um so that, that's what I've been excited about. I mean, I have been pumped about that. Um, I was really excited about the whole Hell's Kitchen. And I, yeah. Uh, but my question to you is, have you watched any good movies lately? No. Okay, so let's get into this. And I hate to bring everything back to like my dietary change, but it yeah. does play a factor into my consumption of what I watch as well. So like... I oftentimes my fate, like my favorite thing to do is Mm -hmm. like, I like going out in my garage with a friend or my, uh, or my fiance, or, you know, you you know, sometimes we'll just bullshit. Even like when we're talking, I like to have, uh, drinks and I like to watch horror movies. That's where I watch all my horror movies, all my action movies, all that shit. Yeah. And I haven't been doing that. So, as you know, I've gone uh, California sober. Kids, <laughs> look it up. Yes. And I find it almost impossible to watch a movie while. Yes. On the substances. Yes. Uh, I It's impossible. Like, I, I tried to do the Joe Bob watch along this week, and it was a great one. It was Mutilator. And I was like, Bah! Yes, and then oh like, my God. like fifteen minutes into it, I was just like, I'm like, I can't focus on this right now. <laughs> I all I've been watching, like, yeah. if we want to talk about, like, hey, what you've been watching, um, yeah. is at least during those nights, um, when I'm indulging, I'm not doing this every night, but um, yes. all I can watch now is mo- is Modern Family. <laughs> Like, I literally like I've I've indulged three times since I've been doing this and I uh, I just watch like fucking 10 episodes of Modern Family and go to sleep. <laughs> That's my fucking time. And I'm having a great time. I'm just like, <laughs> I get it, though. It's hard to focus when you're like in that state of mind. 
Yeah, and I think like also it it's like um I don't know, it's easier to focus on a comedy when you're in that state of mind, especially one that's going to be you know it's a, it's a family sitcom, you know, it, it's, yeah. the, it's gonna, everything's gonna be resolved in 22 minutes, you know? <laughs> so it's full circle. You get answers. It's not yeah. like a movie. Well, Greg's family just came down and we watched, uh, my sister-in-law, she's never seen Deep Blue Sea. Mm, good one. And I was like, oh, come, like, what other movies have you not seen? I'm like, have you seen The Fog? And she's like, no, I'm like, fucking wait. So like the night before we drank heavily and we watched, well, we tried to watch Halloween H2O, but we just talked the whole time and then we're like, gotta go to bed. <laughs> but we ate a gummy and we watched Deep Blue Sea and she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't tell her that. She's like, are you, are you, you know, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> and she's sitting there and I could see it in her face and she's like, wah. And she kept saying wah. And then when Sam, Samuel Jackson died, <laughs> she's like, holy shit. <laughs> You know, I'm, su I'm surprised she was able to keep that one like not even because even you know like not seeing that movie that was parodied in so much shit <laughs> like i know and she couldn't believe it and then we she, we were i don't know how the fuck i stayed awake but we watched pineapple express oh great one i haven't seen that in so long yeah and i was laughing i had tears with the whole red scene the red scene when if they go see danny mcbride and he's got the herpy and then he hits James Franco and he's like, he fucking, he, he punches up or he slaps him and then he spits on him and, he, and James Franco is like, herpes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. I, I may have only seen that one once or twice. Just look up Red's fight scene because you will die. Okay. So now I, can I bring that up? That's a, a good tangent. I would say yeah. like, um, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, now since I've, uh, uh, gone the way of, of Cheech and Chong, um, yes. that there, I don't think that you can do a stoner movie anymore. I don't okay. think it's possible because now it's so, and I'm not saying like God, Oh, shucks. But I mean, like, you do to do a stoner movie now is like it's the equivalent of doing a movie about like we like beer like no <laughs> shit everyone does and you can go buy it at any fucking store you know i know it's only legal in like 31 states or whatever but like if you want it you can fucking get it like yeah totally it's it, it's like you know i i think obviously like you know, there was you know like cheech and chong in the 70s and 80s and then i feel like Harold and Kumar were kind of that for the two thousands, their oh, yeah. trilogy. Yeah. Um, and then like, I'm just, and, and then like half baked in the nineties, uh, yeah. Friday gets lumped in there. Although that's, to it's not, I, it has weed in it, but not really a stoner movie. How high, how high is a great one. Yes. And I, I love that one, but what else too? Like with weed other than like those ones, Day then you get Days and confused. Yep. Days and confused. Um, your Highness. Your Highness is a great one. Land of the Lost. I think everyone hates on the Land of the Lost, but I I think it's ridiculous. I think the, if you smoke one with Will joint, Ferrell? Yeah. I've watched that movie like 15 times. I know that it gets such a bad rap, but it is so fucking funny. I don't care. I love it. <laughs> it's so dumb. The little the, uh y Yorma, whatever, as the monkey fucking kills me. Like <laughs> Yes. Uh he's so great. I yeah, I'm glad that I like that we're on the same wavelength. I I used to watch back in on demand. Whenever that movie would come on demand, I'd watch it. I just laugh <laughs> like. And people were like, "I hated that movie. It was stupid." I'm like, "I think it's one of the, the funniest movies." I laughed uh, so hard. <laughs> and you know which one? I now so now you're speaking or talking about stoner movies. I watched Waiting. Waiting's great. The other night, and there's shit in there that could never be said. Like we've had this discussion before, but like the whole showing your dick and balls, <laughs> and like the the verbiage of if you know you do, it's because not because of this. And I'm just like, you could never ever do that. You could never do the play on Ryan Reynolds hitting on the 17 year old hostess. Oh, because now it's so like it's hard to say because he played that role twice because he also did that in fucking Adventureland. He was like typecast as like the creep for a while. <laughs> yeah, but like the creep that you, you know what I mean? Like that would be okay because it's Ryan Reynolds. There's that like whole, and I, yeah, but I I also wonder because like I 
I, I know a lot about that movie. I don't know why. I really liked that movie when it came out. Yeah. Um, I think very much because it reminded me very much of a Kevin Smith movie, uh, early Kevin Smith, because which we've talked with Dewey Pod Monster. Love Kevin up to a point. I love him as a person, but as a creator, he's gone off a fucking cliff. Uh, <laughs> but it reminds me very much of that, like a workplace comedy. And the guy who wrote it and I think directed it, uh, he he worked in restaurants. Like, so like he based that around everything. And I'm like, I totally can see there being a fucking creep who works in every restaurant who hits on the, the hostesses and all that shit. Like ev- yeah. I guarantee you walk into a fucking Applebee's right now. And that guy's there. And, and it was, it was so to the T and I, I love that movie. Like that one was classic office space. Office space is great. Can I tell you, I got uh, in high school, I got sent home because of waiting why uh i really i loved it and um i don't know who i think my parents honestly gave me uh, a shirt it was a shirt and it just said i think it said wait is a white shirt with a, a white shirt with like red is a red like baseball tee like the top was red yeah. and all it had on it, i think it said waiting on the back if i'm correct and on the front it just had a picture of a of a giant dick with balls, but it, <laughs> it had like the eyes on it and it said the goat. So like, if you looked at it, you're like, it looks like a goat, but if you really look at it, it's a dick and balls. Um, and you get kicked in the ass three times. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, and one of the teachers figured out what it was. Uh, and they're like, why, how did you think this was appropriate? And I remember being a smart ass. I was like, I love animals. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, get out. <laughs> I love uh, that. I wish you still had that shirt because oh, I totally. Yeah. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> but it just we we will never get like a good stoner, like those type movies ever again. Even even like uh, this is the end. This is the end was such a good horror anti or uh, apocalyptic stoner movie. Maybe if you did one like that, where the the precipice of the movie doesn't fully rely on weed. It's just like, these are stoners in a situation. Maybe. Yes. But like just the simplicity of like most of those other movies that we described, you know, just being like people who are high and getting into hijinks, you know, obviously craziness, like riding a fucking cheetah and whatnot, <laughs> but uh, you know, Patrick Harris. Like, yeah, brought his career back. Um, Like, I was thinking, like, I would never watch this because I fucking hate Machine Gun Kelly. But, like, I watch (laughs) I watch this YouTube reviewer and he reviews movies and he often tortures himself. And he reviewed Mm -hmm. some movie that he made, like, within the last, like, two years and it went straight to Netflix. And, like, it's a stoner movie. But, like, it's them. The whole movie is, like, them in California. Him and his buddies, like, hanging out in California. And, like, they got to, like, you know, and oh no, he gets too high and he does something stupid. And, you know, they keep getting into hijinks. Like at one point they have to smoke like a bunch of weed really quickly. And I'm like, why it's legal. You <laughs> like, none of this makes any, you just made a movie about like the, the equivalency of going to the store and buying lottery tickets. It like, this doesn't make any sense. But that, that shows because he's just that much of a, you know what I mean? Like I, I can't get, I can't get any get with anything that he does. Pete Davidson. It's just not my, my thing, my wheelhouse. I can't, that's why I won't watch bodies, bodies, bodies. I will watch bodies, 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 because he's a, he's a, I don't mind. I guess I wouldn't mind him as much if he's a supporting character. He's just a character. I can't stand. Like, he's not a leading man. Like, no, he's not at all. No, I mean, like he thought he was with the whole, like a Kardashian thing, but I just, I can't, Anything that gives attention to the Kardashians, I just automatically am not about it. I mean, as far as like a as a leading man goes, I don't and granted, I don't think he can hold it against him. But he's only had what that movie that King of Staten Island, which I've heard mixed reviews on. I don't want to watch it because he's the lead role. I think it came out during the pandemic. So you really can't judge how successful that was. Mm -hmm. I think this TV show, Bupkis or whatever, I mean, with the amount of fucking stars in this show joe pesci fucking i think robert de niro's in it like if this fails we we might have seen the end of the uh pete davidson experiment (laughs) which i that i'd be completely fine with it because again i don't think he's really that funny or talented to be honest but i wanted to ask you something because we talked about neil patrick harris 
Well, I, I wanted to ask you, but I wanted to tell you too. NPH. NPH. Okay, so I automatically hear NPH, and I think of NPH wouldn't do that. And, you know, <laughs> paying for the White Castle burgers. But apparently, because I fall down these TikTok rabbit holes of like, who is a, a, a sexual deviant in Hollywood? Like someone will post it to this guy's page and he'll research it and he'll go on these long discussions about stars and like their connection to like just horrible shit. But apparently NPH had a cake at one of his parties and the girl's like, I, no, I won't, I won't touch that. Google it at your own discretion. Wait, she, wait, 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 you got to explain. She, okay. she, he had a cake. I, I would argue that cake is at most birthday parties. Uh, so they'll just like leave the person's name and like whatever the, the, the focal point of the story is. That's like crazy. So this girl will go and research it and then talk about it. So she posted it and she's like, this is at your own discretion. Google it if you want, but I warned you. So of course I'm like, I got to see what, I got to see what they're talking about. He had a party and apparently it was like three months after Amy Winehouse died. Mm -hmm. He had a cake made of her decomposed. Ah, well, yeah, that's fucked up. Like, and, and, and people are like, it's super like detailed and, and graphic. And I was like, well, it's a fucking cake. So like, it's not like he actually had her decomposed body brought to the party, which is, it, it's still fucked up. But I'm like, wow, like that's I kind of weird it's weird but cancelable i don't know some people just have a a darker sense of humor about things um <laughs> also you, you never know how this shit actually works did he fucking did he get the cake did somebody bring the cake over you, you know there's a lot of fucking other things that could be there i don't know it's it, i'm gonna i'm gonna wave it off because i love nph uh mm -hmm. I, I love how i met your mother i love uh, everything he's done uh is pretty much ever uh starship <laughs> troopers um woo -woo. But, but uh yeah but that is a weird one but uh, even if it was him i'm gonna be honest with you i'm just gonna play it off to maybe dude's got a weird sense of humor i don't know right because we all have that weird side but there was like other ones too it was john mayer which is no shock to hell because i mean i think john mayer's kind of a douche i don't know if you like him I know one song by him. I know he claims he can see music, which I know is a thing, supposedly. Yeah. But when he says it, I'm like, I don't fucking believe you. You look like a douche. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, all his stuff is completely, like, fuck. Like, he was talking about his dick. And he was like, yeah, my dick needs to be talking about it needs to be racist because it doesn't really, like, just all this shit that he said that had references to, like, KKK and then he said all this shit and then he like took it back. He's like, oh, I was, I was young and I didn't know what I was talking about. People are like, you were 25 years old. Like you should know what you're talking about by that age. Just always like douchebag comments. And I'm just like, does it not surprise you? It's fucking John Mayer. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me one bit, but also like, it's just so weird to me because like, from what I know about him, I know he's like an ultra talented guitarist. I know that that's right. But um, as far as the music that I have heard, it's like so like generic, like just like what I would call like generic white people rock. Like it's not yeah. even rock. It's like I don't even fucking know. Like I guess soft rock. Yeah, and like uh, I, that's like the least of my genres. But and it, too, it's funny that the Grateful Dead asked him to go on tour with them. Well, like have Jerry, someone... Jerry Garcia is dead, so you know. <laughs> I know, but like, have someone a little bit cooler than fucking John Mayer. Yeah, Willie, yeah, Willie Nelson, he'd fit in. That's what I'm saying. Get someone that fits that would fit in with a Grateful Dead like show, other than douchebag fucking John Mayer. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I ever liked about John Mayer is when he did that skit with Dave Chappelle, where he was playing the guitar and showing how white people react to it. They like they're moshing. Yeah, and then he like plays it in front of like a black barber shop, and they're like, "Hey, man." Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I remember that one. It's a great one. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, no, he just seems like a douche, but also like just I, I don't know. It just it, it, it shocks me that he's still popular, like relevant. I, yeah, I, I don't know. It just I guess when you play the most generic, basic bullcrap uh, people who are offended by everything might like it. 
And then Daughters will just keep him forever. Not Daughters himself. I know he has a song called Daughters that like is played at like 75% of the weddings ever fucking uh, had. And load. That's a <laughs> yeah. load track. Yeah. Uh, our, uh, yeah, I, that, that, that was an interesting one. Yes. I just, I, I, th I thought it was kind of weird. I mean, the other one too about the, and the one about the, the underage shit, like they actually have video clips of it. And it's just, it's just like. Wait, what, what with him? No, not with him, but like uh, Nelly. Oh God. Don't he was uh... one of them. Cause he was at a show. Sam, he was at a show, which, cause you know, we talked like our music one and we were talking about like all the old school rappers, which also, by the way. I love Nelly. Our state fair announced that Ludacris was playing. Do you know how I I ran upstairs and almost peed my pants because I like tripped on the stair. I was so excited and I showed it to Greg and he's just like, "Am I going to this?" I'm like, "No, I am." <laughs> we uh, I had so we always have a um a um what do you call it? like so again I'm not gonna give my exact location but I yeah. don't live in Chicago. I live about. 30 minutes outside of Chicago, right in the tippy top of North of Indiana, which is called Northwest Indiana. Rest of Indiana hates us because we're predominantly, um, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, liberals and, uh, Illinois hates us because they're, we're not from Chicago. Anyway, we're called, re <laughs> we're called region rats. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, they call us region rats. Anyway, uh, there is a big festival that it's been growing over the last like five years where they have, a rock night and a country night and they always have like a, a latino night like, a, like all uh, uh spanish music and then yep. they have a rap night um and it's always always been free um it's where i've seen limp biscuit before um yep. for free um yep. this is the first year they're charging and they announced the uh headliner is going to be like lil wayne and i was like fuck man that'd be fucking cool to go see lil wayne like in my like not like at like a giant like stadium. Like it's like right. at a park, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a park that I could, I drive by pretty regularly. <laughs> like it would yeah, be cool. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's like, that's how I felt with Ludacris. And also Ashanti is playing like a little bar. That's not far from us. Like our daughter's bir uh, birthday party was, I think like right across the street from it. Ashanti's playing this festival too. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm taking Greg because he loves her. He thinks, she, which when we got together, I'm like, shut up. Because like I said before, Greg's music is like shellac, meat puppets, you know, like all these. And then like, yes, and all these other bands. I would never think that he would be into Ashanti, but he loves her. So his Father's Day present is us going to see Ashanti. <laughs> That's awesome. He's so fun. He's like, can we get like the front row seats? I'm like. No, they're fucking like eighty-two dollars. <laughs> like, we'll sit, we'll sit in the back. <laughs> uh, that's cool, though. That's that. that it, it's uh, yeah. I don't know. It. I think it'd be very funny if we both went and saw Ashanti in the same calendar year randomly, and like we could do an episode and be like, "Why was she at your show?" Like, oh my god, we should get like clips. Like, even <laughs> if you go to Little Wayne, we should just do like a collection of our musical. Like our concerts that we did, a, a, our concert series. We'll see. I haven't committed because I also don't know what they're going to charge. And I'm mm -hmm. not. And, you know, it, I, there's a thing in me where I'm like, I get it. You're charging now. But I'm like, it's always been free. So I kind of feel like it should still That's be not free. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Like, but all right. You know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but so real quick, back to the whole Nelly thing. It was a thing on oh, Nelly yeah. and he was on stage and he was singing like. No matter what I do. That song he did with Kelly Rowland. He had like a 15 year old girl on stage and he was like caressing her face. Like at first he was like talking to her, but then he was being like super, super creepy with her. And I was like, I mean, again, not to be like, I'm like desensitized to it because I feel like a lot of famous people and that's, and that's being, I shouldn't, I shouldn't group it like that, but just, there's a lot of, that happening well with the shock value kind of you're just kind of like oh so who else is on this list is it so again obviously i'm not seeing it and i'm not going to make excuses but is it is he because like you kind of describe like the classic like you know um who am i thinking of like 
It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Who's Barry, that? Barry, uh, Barry Man not Barry Manilow. Well, um, he would also work. Manilow would work for this as well. But that style of musician, yeah, they always bring like a person on stage and like sing a song to them and maybe like caress their face or or their arm or something. Is it that or is it is he like giving an old honky honky or like? <laughs> and that I don't. It, there was no honky honky. <laughs> Right. Stage, but it was it was just like extremely like creepy creepy because it's weird like... it, weird enough though yeah i just I, weird i guess maybe i'm just like the bar is so low that i'm just like uh, and i i know it's 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 partly i'm like i just like him so i'm like but yeah I, I, i'd have to see the video but the bar is so low i mean the bar at this point i mean it's r kelly pissing on someone so <laughs> yes it's, where how much lower can it get than that god exactly. knows we'll find out soon because wasn't there army hammer who was accused of eating people whatever oh uh, god. <laughs> when his family came down we felt them that rabbit hole too like we literally and no one believed me and all this shit was coming up about it like he went to go help his friend at the hotel in like uh where was it nevada or someplace and all these missing people came up Yep. And now he's like he works at like a hotel in the Cayman Islands where we can't extra, where we can't extradite him, I believe. Yes. And like his his family is like billionaires. Yeah. Weird, weird shit. It also, weird shit. fucking terrible actor. I can't believe he ever fucking made it in the business at all. I guess just off of his pretty face, I guess. But The only movie I watched him in was Call Me By Your Name with Tim Timothy Shamalamalama. Timothy Shamalamalama. Oh, 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 Timothy Chalamet. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, had to, I had to translate. I had to put my uh, my my Jordana translator on for a second. Because <laughs> I can never say his name right. But that one was all right. I actually kind of enjoyed that movie. But um, again, I think he was just like eye candy, which it's wasn't eye candy for me. Um, I think the only movie I can remember him in is if I'm. Yep, that's what I thought. Uh, he's the love interest in Crossroads, the Britney Spears movie. <laughs> Was Which, he really? Yeah, yeah, he plays the 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 love interest in that, and I can tell you that that movie is so much fun to watch because <laughs> it's <laughs> horrendous. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd, hello, Dan Aykroyd. Uh, oh, the chick from Orange Is the New Black, Kentucky. Uh, oh, oh uh, Taryn Man Manning. Taryn Manning is the pregnant one, and then Zoe like, Saldana. Zoe Saldana is in it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a fucking good movie. I mean, that's not a good movie. Let me rephrase that. It is not a good movie. It is definitively <laughs> not a good movie, but it is it is fun to watch because it's so goddamn bad. And Britney Spears, I mean, uh, like we could we could we could review it. I I mean, can we can we do like. Oh my God, I would love to. Can we do that for real? I genuinely would. Cause I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm remembering how crazy that movie is. Like, like Britney Spears is in the movie, but she's not the one whose dream it is, is to be a singer. Yeah. Taryn Manning is. So like you have Britney Spears who is a fucking singer. So we, the whole movie resides on, we want to hear her sing. And yet she's not the one who the movie's about. It, it, it truly, I remember it when I watched it as an adult. I watched it as a kid because I just love Britney Spears. I was yeah. like, I was like, this movie, it totally seems like this movie, the, 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 the pregnant role was written for Britney Spears. And then they were just like, yeah, but she can't be fat because we won't sell tickets. So <laughs> we're going to flip flop them. We're going to flip flop them. Yeah, <laughs> like, we, can't ab we can't advocate that Britney Spears has ever had sex. She's yeah, no, no, no. She's, she's totally a virgin, except all of the implications of every music video we've ever made that she's not. Uh, and the like, main song, I'm not a, yeah. I'm not a woman, or I'm not a girl, not yet a woman, or yeah, great song by the way, but yeah, whatever. And also too, got to add in there, Kim Cattrall. Oh yeah, is her mom as the, as the shitty mom? Yeah, who like is like I fucking I don't I don't need you. I have a family now. I can't believe I remember this much about Crossroads. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I know. I can't wait. To, that's the movie that we have to review. I mean, we have two that we've did, we've picked out for future dates. We have Crossroads, which I'm 100% down for. And we yeah. still at some point need to do our trilogy review of the Black Christmas movies. Yes. Um, totally. Which at this point, maybe we should just wait to fucking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that would be a good Christmas special. Maybe we could do like a halfway to Christmas. Have, uh, that would literally be right now because it's six months to Christmas. Oh, no, uh, like I mean, within this week or two, we we were in the we're in the 
we're in the month for that for that to be relevant. So maybe we could do like, oh, wait, 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 wait. All right, I got it. I got it. I got it. We do Christmas in July. Let's do it. We do Christmas in July. How about all July? Maybe not all July, but some of July, we do some of the shittiest, stupidest, funnest uh, uh, holiday themed killer movies. Yes. I'm fucking. We had to watch Santa Jaws. Santa Jaws would be a good one. Uh, I mean, I think Jack Frost would be a great one with yep. the, the, the carrot rape, which no one talks about, which I can't believe I, I, I the fact that that is not talked about more in the horror community is perplexing to me. <laughs> like maybe people are scared cause they don't want to be like, Hey, do you remember that? <laughs> everyone talks about the tree scene in evil dead one, but no one talks about, and that was relatively an unknown actress. I mean, this is Shannon Elizabeth who like went on to be like a giant sex symbol and her starting role was getting molested by a carrot. So whatever, we'll get to it. <laughs> oh, Jesus uh, I love it. Uh, I think it'd be great. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh all right so we're free flowing here um we may come up with more topics here uh this is so what we're gonna do here is we are gonna pull up i have just the um the the, the trending and the newest trailers on imdb.com we're going to pull these up we're going to review them uh live with you we have to talk over them so if you really want to see the trailer by itself go to imdb yes um, and Jordana for us, I'll cut this part. There will be ads in between them. So yep. we can talk over them. I may edit them out. I may not. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Sounds good. Um, but I am going to start sharing my stream here and I figure we'll just go on a list. I'll pick one that I want to watch. You pick one that you want to watch. Um, and we'll see what interests us or thinks is, uh, kind of crazy here. Okay. So I'm going to start it off with, if you don't mind, go ahead, go right ahead. Uh, I told you this off air that right now, as far as horror movies go, I don't really have much on the horizon that I give a shit about um, besides this fucker over here because uh, yep. I love a big old chompy chomp movie. Oh, hell yeah. Um, but I think Five Nights at Freddy's potentially. It, it, God, I hope it's rated R. It, I hope it's rated R. Praying for rated R. But right. I could, but I could be so popular with kids. I could see him pull the PG thirteen shit, which eh, I could understand. But I think it has potential to be a the the movie of the the summer. I think it it would be pretty good. Let's let's hope because I have the hopes for it too. So we're gonna play this trailer. It's just a forty eight second teaser trailer. Uh, haven't really fully oh, watched this trailer. yet, so we'll uh, we'll go through it here. Do you I know what Do you know what Five Nights at Freddy's is? By the way. It's a video game, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh, yes, because uh -huh. I know my my nephew is obsessed with it. So, yeah. So, and I also, and I think they, and I've, if I'm correct, they signed Matthew Lillard to a three picture deal, which um, the character he's going to play um, from the games. And granted, they're going to change things. He's like the previous guy who did the job, who like leaves voice like kind of helps guide the other character, the new, the main character through it to survive. So yeah. I think that he would be good in that role too. I'm just happy to see him back on screen. Oh, I just, he should have never, the fact that he, and he never went away, but he went out of the mainstream for so long. He's mm -hmm. so good. Like I, he, he, I'm glad that he's getting the recognition that he deserves. Yes. Now, finally. All right, let's play this. Okay. And tell, tell me if you can hear that. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Good. Pizzeria, where fantasy. And I love fun the come to the life. '80s hey Chuck E. Cheese bullshit vibe. Me too, because I grew up at Chuck E. Cheese. If you're yeah, this video, it's and then we got Hunger Games in here. Yeah. Newest security guard. And let's see, I mean, everything from the games is pretty. I mean, the first game is so basic. I wish I could show you a we clip of it. So much fun yep. together. Oh, I hope we get. I hope it gets R. It's gotta be an R, but like, uh, uh, money always wins, right? So you can't discredit a good pit, uh, kids pitball scene because they had that in Clown, and that turned out to be scary as hell and gruesome. So hopefully they'll do that with this because it's yeah. perfect. 
I'm hoping so, but I think that looks super fun. Uh, yeah. it, it's just, I think the, the big question out there and if they've announced it yet is what the rating's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like what happens to you in the game if you lose is they take your body and they shove you into a, an animatronic and basically like just crush you inside of it as they seal you up and like create another animatronic. So like, the game is, is it implies a lot of violence, but none is really ever actually shown that I'm aware of, at least the ones that I played. So that could be totally PG-13 because that, you know, play of you're pretty much done and you're well, in a, you know. Yeah, and it depends on how they're going to go because in the game, you're the only one in there. So they're obviously mixing things up because there's going to be multiple people in the building. Um, yeah. But we'll just have to see. But I, I I think that could have, even if it's PG-13, not all PG-13 movies are bad. I'm just, we like blood and violence. So <laughs> yes, just, just give us our, our rating and just give us what we want. I, I, I would understand though, because it is, it's primarily a children's game, but it is a fucked up children's game. <laughs> well, speaking of children's game, the other night I was doing my homework and Rosalind turned on this thing called Amanda. I have to look it up, but it's like Amanda and something and it was on YouTube and it's a game that you play and it's super fucking twisted. It's this little girl and there's like a sheep and they, she'll ask questions and they get really creepy. It's like, what happens when you unalive yourself? What the and fuck? The, and the sheep's like, ah, Amanda, I don't think we should be talking about it. And then like another animal disappears. Oh, the fox gets killed. And she's like, what do you think happened to the fox? And it's so fucking scary. And I'm trying to like pay attention. I'm staring at the screen and I'm watching Roz. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, what is this an actual game? And she's like, yeah. And then it turns into real life. And the I, I um, want to know. Amanda the Adventurer? Yes. That needs to be a movie. I, well, this needs to be something because it's it gave it creeped me out. Yeah, yes. Is, yes. It gives me like uh channel zero vibes. I mean, this looks fucking cool. I'm not gonna lie. Like, this is the kind of sh- I love horror games. Yeah. Um, I will probably be playing might be playing this tonight. This looks fucking cool. The guy like went through it and it's so it would like he did a, a couple like part series on YouTube and we watched majority of it, but looks awesome. And I think that they need to divulge into the world of these types of video games and turn them into movies. I, 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 and I think, you know, with, I think you're going to see a lot more of that with the success of, you know, Reese, not that video game, there has been successful video game stuff, whether or not they're good, but I mean, they, they made like 55 of those resident evil movies and they've all sucked balls. Right. Um, but they make money. Yeah. Um, but- I, I think you're going to see more, stuff and horror is perfect for it because you can get cheap little games like this you probably buy them for the rights for nothing and then make them make a movie make make 10 million dollars yeah like she played hello neighbor and that was creepy as hell and we have the little mort doll and wolfie will take it and he'll come up and he'll like grab mort's ass and i'll just see like mort's face in front of wolfie (laughs) like just staring at me with a toy i'm like you you sent me the video of him doing that before (laughs) i uh, i like hello neighbor i think hello neighbor would be a good one too totally um, all right, so I'm going to switch over to back to this trailer list and let's see. Can you read what these say or no? Yes, I can see them all. Well, you just if you see something that jumps out at you that you want to check out, this is just the trending. We can also go to anticipated, recent and popular. So we don't have to watch it because it's long. But so we went and saw Guardians and the Flash trailer was in front of it. And I'm telling you what. There might be hope for DC movies because that looked pretty intense. And a lot, I think Steven, or um, not Steven Spielberg, Stephen King said that he saw. He gave it big ups. Yeah. An advanced screening and said, like, this is the way to do it. Cause I'm, I'm telling you what. And then we'll get into a trailer. Guardians fucking destroyed me as a human <laughs> being. And I don't think I can, like, I don't think I could ever watch it. And when we left, I felt like we left a funeral. Like we went and got snacks after and my face was puffy and I felt emotionally like fucking drained. Wow. I've heard it's, 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 uh, it's, it's intense for that. Um, I'm going to wait uh, just cause I, 
on principle, I bitched about Marvel for so long here. I can't give them my money. So I'm going to wait no. in three months. I think they said it's going to be on Disney plus. So I'll just see it then. Yeah. I mean, be, honestly, like Greg cried multiple times, like Greg's dad who can't see the screen. Cause he physically can't fucking see. things. <laughs> he, he cried like numerous times. It was, it was so good. Cause it like, we talked so much shit about Marvel and how, you know, it's getting to be a little bit much. This movie was perfection because it had comedy, it had action, but the emotional element to it, I can't. I, and I I haven't seen it, but I will say that of the Marvel movies, I think the Guardians are my favorite um, yep. just because, and I think primarily because I've been a big fan of James Gunn his yep. entire career from Tromeo and Juliet because he is a trauma kid. Rest yep. Rep that trauma. Woo, woo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, I love trauma, and he was a, a trauma kid. And um, you know, he did uh, Super, which is a fucking great movie. If you've never seen yep. it, Slither is uh, unbelievable. If you please tell me you've seen Slither. Yes, of course I have. Oh, thank God. And he did the Belco Experience too, which I, mm -hmm. which like it, it shows in his movies how fucking versatile he is because he just can do so much in different elements, but like he nails it pretty much every time he does. And he adds that. I would say that's that the right level of wackiness to his movies. Like the, there's every movie I see of his, I still see a little bit of trauma, like a yeah. little bit of trauma. I mean, first of all, Lloyd Kaufman was literally in fucking guardians. Um, yep. so that was a pretty big one. Uh, but <laughs> like, um, so I still see that and he's really good at balancing that. Well, I think some of the other Marvel movies and all right, nerds, if you want to fucking hate me for this, I'll say it. I think Thor outside of the first one has just been a disaster because they tried to go like comedy and goofy. And I'm like, I don't want to see Thor with fucking ass tattoos. Like, <laughs> like I don't give a shit. Like I, I want to see him be a God. I don't want to see him with a big fat beer belly. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that funny? No, it's not. <laughs> I hated that part of, was it Endgame? That was an end game. Yeah. Where he turned, he turned into a fucking uh, stoner playing PS2 for some reason. I hated all I hate I hated Endgame. Like Infinity War was done so well and I'm Infinity like Infinity War was good. Yes, and I'm like this is perfect. This is going to lead into, you know, and then we got Endgame and everyone was like, "Oh, I loved it. I hated it. I thought it was just such a fucking horrible way to end what they created." And even though there was flops, I felt like they kind of were building this like greatness and then completely dropped the ball, but you know how we discussed about like um, feeling like you, you you get like an ending. I'm not like I'm not spoiling anything, but when you have like a movie and it's supposed to have the beginning and the end and it's supposed to be all wrapped in together and it solidifies like with the Wait, screen movies. I I come on spoiling Endgame. I think you're allowed to spoil Endgame at this point. I mean, no Guardians. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, probably don't want to do that. People would probably be pissed off. <laughs> well, just, it's it. He. That's how you do it. Is you just you add all of these layers in and, and you, you take risks and you, you know what I mean? Like you, 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 you give it your all because it's, the, the, it's supposed to be the tying of the ends. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that he did it so well. I was nervous with all the reviews and stuff, but. I, I, I will see it. I, I, I'm, like I said, I, I, of all the Marvel stuff, that is the one I like the franchise. I like the most there's, not my favorite movie. Logan, I think, is the best superhero movie, but yes. that's neither here nor there. Um, I uh, I will say just on the last thing is another reason I love James Gunn is just how he reacted to this whole getting fired thing. Like, how, how much more perfect did that work out for him? Got fired for stupid Twitter jokes that were clearly just him being a fucking troll online. Yeah. Got another job at DC, made a DC movie while they sorted all that shit out, came back, got to finish his franchise, 
Yep. Then has already literally told them, I'm never working for you again, but I am going to steal all these people and I'm taking them to DC. <laughs> and now he's the president of DC. I love that. Batista's already came out and he's like, yeah, I'm looking for a role, right? We're, we're finding a role for me right now. I think Karen Gillan, who plays uh, Nebula, she's yep. already announced that she's going. I'm like, I love this dude. He just told Disney to fucking suck it. And, <laughs> and, and, it's, and, and also made like millions of dollars off of it. It's the it's the best fuck you ever. And also, so back to the 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 trailer. The Flash looks so fucking intense, and I am here for it. And we don't have to watch it because it's two minutes. But I'm I have really seen excited. it. Yeah. I really I I want it. I'm gonna see it for sure because I'm a DC fan overall. That's where my heart is. Minus Mar yeah. minus X Men. But I have heard the same thing that like they're saying that like this is the movie. Like this is the movie that's finally gonna set DC up. Although I think Wonder Woman, the first one, was really great. I, I like Wonder Woman. Yes. As it sits, it's probably my second favorite superhero movie, uh, behind Logan. Then yep. part two is probably my least favorite superhero movie ever. I was uh, so confused with that. I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Like it's I like terrible. I kind of understood like where they were kind of go trying to go with it, but it was but, a disaster. And um, like Justice League, I hated Justice League. Yeah, I, the the Snyder cut's a little better, but it's also three and a half fucking hours long. Um, Nobody got time for that. No, but I worry because there's so much controversy around that that actor, and mm -hmm. uh, and rightfully so. I mean, let's just be clear. I'm not defending him whatsoever, but they're trying to put a positive spin and I don't want to say positive, but you know, like, Oh, he's got mental health issues, which that's true. I mean, I, I everyone has to deal with, I don't, when I say this, I'm trying to speak very openly and, yes. and I don't want to upset anyone. Mental health is totally real. So, and, and, but they are trying very hard to market this as and market him mm -hmm. as like a recovering person who has conquered his mental health issues when i am just curious if he actually has because it seemed like if just for a good two years there it was just fucking every other month was like oh and he choked this woman outside of a bar yeah <laughs> like, during, during karaoke like who fucking yeah. bothers people at karaoke and then so they keep him but they got rid of um kang from oh yeah yeah because he put his wife in a chokehold or something so yeah but just I mean, great but Great human beings. Almost like parallel to what Ezra Miller did. And they completely cut all ties with him. Like non-negotiable cut ties. And now Ezra Miller, they're saying, oh, this is going to be the move. And now they're keeping him. So is it kind of like, I don't know. It, it's really none of my business because Hollywood's going to do what they want. But I just think it's kind of. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I if uh, I get it. I think Disney is like, dude, we're, we're our franchise is already like established. Like we, yeah. we don't need this guy. And truthfully, that character and the way that Marvel has set everything up now, none of it fucking matters. It's all the multiverse. So you can just, oh, this guy came from this one and now he looks a little different. Like it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. Like people yeah. come back from the dead. It's all just fucking none of it's permanent. Yeah. Um, They're already talking about bringing back fucking uh, Iron Man. I'm like, oh, OK. Um. Oh, Jesus, no. Well, yeah. I pulled a stupid mo moment in the movie because Michael Keaton, you know, was Batman. Mm -hmm. And then Ben Affleck was in there. And I'm like, wait, how the fuck are the two Batmans? And Greg's like, it's. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, uh, OK. Because to me, like, I get it. I understand that's a part of it. But for me, it doesn't make not like it doesn't make sense, but I don't like it. It's like either have Michael Keaton or have fucking Val Kilmer or have Christian Bale or have like just have one person. Well, and I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but if they go with Flashpoint, which mm -hmm. is probably the Flash's most, I would argue it's his most famous story. Yeah. That will make a lot more sense when you watch it. It does seem okay. that's the way they're going. Um, but I'm a, I love the Flash. I wish I, my wallet's around. I literally, I'm like a four year old. I still have a Flash wallet. <laughs> um, that's okay. But, I also and also a negative thing I'll say while I want to see this movie, it's also going very much because they're doing Flashpoint. It seems like mm -hmm. they're very much doing their version of 
Marvel where it's going to be like, well, there's this guy and then there's the alternate versions. And it's, I'm like, none of it's going to matter again. Cause then everybody's just going to be, Oh, you're dead. Oh, you can come back. Oh, you can be recast. You can be, it's like, it, it's all just, none of it's permanent. It's all just bullshit, but we'll see. Yeah. I kind of, I think uh, without seeing the movie, I'd have to see it and see how he does. Cause I didn't really like him in justice league. He was yeah. funny in the brief moment he is in Peacemaker. Spoiler alert, he shows up in Peacemaker for like 35 seconds. I liked him in Secrets of Dumbledore, too. Yeah, he's he's not a bad actor, but no, that role would be very easy to technically rewrite because of well, the storyline they're doing with multiple versions of Barry and mm-hmm. different timelines and shit. And it, it just, it could very... I'm just... They got a backup plan. I guarantee you that if they're like, if if the if this comes out, and trust me, people are gonna bitch when this comes out. If they if it's too much heat, there's a pretty easy rewrite where they can just be like, and here's Newberry. <laughs> <laughs> you know they already have that because you know as soon as that shit started happening, they're like, oh fuck, yeah, oh no. But I've heard it's, but they say it's really good, so we'll see. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm I'm excited for it because. It gave me that feeling of when you watched Mar like or superhero. I'll say superhero trailers that actually got you amped up. Where you're just like, "Oh shit, that looks." You know what I mean? Like that looks good. And I believe, if I'm correct, uh, when James Gunn took over as co uh, chairman of DC movies, Mm -hmm. he there was, I think, three or four movies that were in nearing completion that he didn't have anything to do with, and that was shazam flash aquaman and there might have been one more and he basically said if i'm correct that he said that the flash is going to be canon i don't think aquaman is and i think whatever the other one is not like those are just going to be their own things and then they're over yeah um he did say shazam was and uh that movie i've heard is a fucking pile of shit uh but he's like really good friends with Zachary Levi. So mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah. We were going to watch that this week. And then we ended up watching. I like the first one. I did too. And I, I, I was excited. I'm still excited to see it, but I mean, all the, all the movies that have been hyped up, I haven't liked yet this year. And all the movies that were kind of um, shattered on, I liked like Renfield. I loved Renfield. I've heard mixed reviews on it. I loved it. Well, the actors were even fighting um, on the the Shazam thing because it didn't do well. It bombed. Um, And then the kid who plays um, Bobby, uh, that Bobby Batson, I think his name. I don't fucking remember. I'm not a Shazam fan. Whatever. The little (laughs) shit. Yeah. The one from it. Yes. uh, That turns into the flash or the flash uh, into Shazam. Uh, He, after the, it bombed like in the first week or two, he went out he either did an interview or he did on Twitter. And he basically called Zachary Levi, uh, like like a bad actor. Um, because, and I'm kind of, he's right actually. And it's, it's the director's fault. Whoever did it. He's like, Zachary never acted like me. Like when I change, like when, when the kid turns into Shazam, He's yep. a completely different fucking person. And I don't mean physically, obviously assholes listening to this who want to be <laughs> stupid. I mean like his personality, like he goes from like yep. a brooding pissed off teenager that like we've all been to like, yep. oh, I like bubble gum and candy and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, and I was like, not really Zachary's fault, but uh, it's a valid point. <laughs> it is a valid point because you should know like to, to, to turn into that person like a good example is yellow jackets because you have the older cast and then you have the girls and i think that is some of the best tv because i think it's casted perfectly yeah you gotta line up the only argument i'll say where that case doesn't where it, it better because it doesn't mm-hmm. is in face off in face off travolta tries his best to do a nick cage That's and hard. then nick and then nick cage decided I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want in that movie and doesn't act like Travolta at all. And it, the movie is better for it. <laughs> I think that's a Nick or I think that's a Nicholas cage thing just to do his own goddamn thing. I mean, it's when he's truly the best. Uh, yeah. I, I think he's, he's in a re- 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 recon- Renaissance. Yeah. Um, him as, as uh, Dracula. You know, they filed his teeth down for that. 
Are you fucking with me? No, he uh, had his teeth filed, not to the points, but yeah. they couldn't. He, he wanted a, a, the prosthetic to look a certain way. Yep. Um, so they had to file his teeth down um, a couple, like a quarter of an inch or some shit like that to actually fit the prosthetic in his mouth to uh, the way he liked it. So he permanently changed his uh, oral structure of his mouth for that movie. The, the chef's, mwah, chef's kiss, because I think he is so goddamn good in that movie. A lot of people are like, I can't really see him as Dracula. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Was- yeah, like, what are you talking about? He's made to be Dracula. And he already has said that he, right now, because of his love for that role, and that he did a more, obviously, Renfield's kind of a comedy, that yep. he kind of fell in love with the Dracula role, that he wants to play it in a more, like, Bram stoker kind of, like, serious one. And I'm like, I'm fucking down for that. And somebody, if so, there's a billion people who seem to want to finance Nick Cage movies. Somebody make that movie, please. <laughs> like, right now, because honestly, how good this was, because this one, it was gory. It was funny. I lo- I don't I don't know Nicholas Holt. Like I knew he played. My sister in law told me he played Beast in X Men. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, the menu. He was great because he was an asshole that everyone hated. Mm-hmm. And I I don't really know him in like Bridgerton or whatever shows that he was on. But he was perfect as Renfield. Like their chemistry together was so goddamn good. And I liked that one better than Evil Dead Rice. I've still yet to see either one. Um... So I can't chime in on it yet, but I'm going to get to it once. Uh, uh, Renfield, I'm just uh, that's I pretty much buy any Nick Cage movie, literally like any of them. I have some of his not so good stuff all the way to his amazing stuff. <laughs> but that just shows your love for him. Yeah, I, you... I genuinely love Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah. so I, I think that you'll truly love this because I know I was surprised because everyone said that it bombed and I didn't realize that how badly it did. And I was like, I I loved it. I didn't realize until you told me because I thought I, I see I, at first I was seeing just great reviews. And then all of a sudden, after you told me it bombed, like I went on and then I saw like it seems to be one of those movies that people either are like two thumbs up or two thumbs down. Like there's no in the middle. Like it just seems like either I fucking thought it was great or I absolutely hated it. Yeah. Um, which I also seem to see that for Evil Dead Rise. So it seems to be uh, either way, but we'll, well, I'll have to get into it. Maybe I'll watch Rise tonight. I think it's on demand for like five bucks or something. So I'm really excited to get to hear your thoughts on that because I know that we love 13 and a lot of people are like, oh my God. People hate you know? 2013. There's, there's people who hate 2013 and I fucking can't. Um, I mean, I'm just like, is it just because it's not Bruce? It, it, is it because it's a girl like is that what the issue is because it's so goddamn good it truly is and a lot of people like were comparing it saying this and this and i won't say what it is but i'm like i don't see it because i thought 13 was like the bee's knees i thought 13 was one of the best horror remakes i've ever seen and then this one i was like holy shit if they did that then what they're gonna do now is gonna be fucking blow your you know blow your your noggin off and I would argue twenty that 2013, I think, is not only my favorite horror remake of all time. I think it's my favorite remake of all time, period. Um, yeah. Maybe, again, in the ho- – which horror is what I like, but, like, obviously, we love 2005 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Is that it? Yes. Yes. I think The Ring, great. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have to go with fucking um, – what's the Scorsese one with Nicholson? Marky Mark. <laughs> oh, damn it. Is it a is it a um like a like a gangster movie? Yeah. It's a remake of a Korean movie. God damn it. I'm gonna feel like an idiot. Marky Mark. <laughs> That's me type Marky Mark. <laughs> Scorsese. Let's see what comes up. Uh that 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 the departed. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> oh, the Depart- I don't know if I've seen that. If you like gangster movies, it's pretty fucking good. But it is a remake. And it's weird Scorsese made, did a remake. Kind of weird. That Never would have thought that would have happened, but he did. I do like gangster movies, but I feel like I would never hold that title card because I have never seen Goodfellas. I've never seen Ooh. The Godfather. Like, the, the, the important... The heavy hitters. Yes. I mean, like, I love Scarface, if that counts. It's, it's up there. It's a little different, but it's up there. I would yeah. say, I think at the very minimum, you should see Goodfellas. Goodfellas is pretty fucking damn near perfect. So, like, 
my self-realization that I, I don't have to do school ever again. I'm like, I'm going to watch so many fucking movies. Like I was so excited. Like, you know, that meme of Nicole Kidman skipping down the street because she was divorcing Tom Cruise. <laughs> That's me realizing like all the movies that I can watch. Yeah. She skipped down the street to an AMC theater where movies are magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and speaking of Nicole Kidman, have you ever watched, and I know I don't want to get off track, but we are on a tangent right now. Have you ever watched The Killing of a Sacred Deer with her in it? No. Don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking don't, don't do it. Honestly, I, I, this may be stupid. And like, I was just like, I don't know if the deer gets killed in the movie. I'm probably already not going I'm, I'm already like points down on it. So I don't know if there's a deer who actually dies in it, but I was like, eh, eh, Bambi already traumatized me enough. By the way, Bambi's getting a horror movie, but you know, <laughs> isn't Cinderella getting one too? I don't know. I, I, I think it's just a free for all on anything. That's not copywritten right now. They're like, they're just like blood and honey made a million dollars and it was total piece of shit. We could all do it. <laughs> like... Okay. I want to, after this episode, after we record, I want to send you stuff from TikTok because they're they're like just fucking overly doing these stupid ideas for movies but there's these content creators that make these little like 35 second shorts these need to be made into horror movies because they're fucking terrifying and i i showed greg one last night and he's sitting there and he did the whole he pulled his eyes away i'm like no watch it and he's like i'm scared and it was so tiny but he's like i don't show me another one because it scared him okay they're like it's just like a It'll say like a caption and you'll see the guy like looking over at someplace and it'll shoot to the to the space and you'll see nothing. And then it goes back to him and he's like doing this again. And then it goes back and you like vaguely see something. And then it'll so they're like 35 seconds. They're super, super short. I mean, how about this in between this episode and the one we're recording for the following one? Send them. We'll, let's fucking review them. Yeah. They're, they're, you <laughs> wait, is it, wait, is it TikTok? Yeah. I don't have TikTok on my computer, so damn it. Yeah, uh, you can send them to the Instagram though. I think I can watch videos via Insta. We'll try. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But I just, th I think it's brilliant. I wanted to get your opinion because it's like shit that is so scary because it's like that play on the eye, and then the things that they create in that moment. Like, why are we not utilizing this? Why are we not doing stuff like that? I mean, but aren't they sort of? Because I feel like a not on a grand scale, but I feel like a lot of like YouTuber and like internet people are like making movies right now. I mean, it, it, I mean, Skin of Marink, I mean, that was just, I mean, total piece of shit movie in my opinion, but like mm -hmm. it went big and like that was obviously just some guy who like basically made a YouTube movie and it just caught notoriety and went with it. And I think the smile smile was originally a YouTube short. Uh, yep. With, yep. Anything here jumping out at you? Um, why don't we do oh. how long's the Meg? Two and a half minutes. Do you want to let's do that one? Cause I feel like I haven't actually seen, um, the trailer. I, I saw like teasers for it, but I haven't seen the actual trailer. Now, have you seen the first one? I have, and I I mm -hmm. enjoyed it. I, it wasn't like a standout, like I was going to watch it, you know, several times, but I didn't mind it. I love a good creature feature. I think that he... oh boy. For pe there's people who are hard on this movie, and I'm like, on the first one? Yeah. And I was like, ah, how like it but you can also tell me at the same time that you liked like ghost shark and you know, i'm like it's still a fucking shark movie <laughs> like at least this one has a big budget right you know what the other one i'm excited for is um that black one the black shark oh, oh the one the, the one in like that takes place in mexico yes yeah that looks I'm excited awesome for that one. Oh shit so i've not seen this trailer yet uh what Big time wow. questions because there were not dinosaurs in the first <laughs> one. <laughs> no, but I'm not mad that they're there. No, that that's a combo that I am okay with. Oh, they got like the whole cast back too. That's pretty cool. You know, sometimes they fuck fuck around with that. Yep. 
and they get like uh, horrible just a under cast people. And this is like the whole cast. All right. Oh, we got underwater guns. I'm always here for that. You can't be having heart in the uh, preview either. No. Okay, and I like that it looks like there's going to be a lot more creatures than just the Meg. It's going to be, yeah. well, obviously a T-Rex and some sort of... Oh, okay, that's cool. So I've read the book. Yeah. It, I don't want to say too much, but... and Because also just off a of trailer, it looks to like me like they're going a little more with the book because the first one didn't. <laughs> yeah. And also, the book is terrible. So, so don't worry. But it's like, it's it's trash. Good trash. <laughs> Was he, did he just hit a dinosaur? I think so, with a shovel. Uh, Shut up. <laughs> I mean. Wow. <gasps> <laughs> That's a total plug to Jaws. Or oh, yeah. nod to Jaws. A nod to it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it looks like a nod to Deep Blue Sea, in my opinion. Yep. Oh, and there's some sort of squid monster. I'm down for that. Oh, my God. I'll be honest. Oh. I have a man crush on Jason Statham. Uh, I just, just honestly, a lot of his movies are fucking terrible. But if he's in it and he's hitting people, that's pretty much good enough for me. Yeah, he's pretty goddamn intense, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I mean, and if it's him fighting a shark, I, I, I am down for it. I will see, and that's a movie that I would love to see in theater. Oh, yeah. Big and, screen. Yes, you got to you gotta do the big screen for that one. So I'm, I'm glad that we watched that because the other shark movie looked really good. And I was pumped about that one. I Yeah, I, wait, what was the name of that one? Let me look that up real quick. Cause I, it, the, and I'll be honest, obviously the Meg is goofy fun. Um, some people are also mad at it because it's one of those movies that is heavily marketed towards China by casting half of the cast as Chinese actors. But I don't give a shit. Why do I care? As long as they're fighting a shark, who gives a fuck? If Chinese yeah, like, people, what? if Chinese people like it, then it's good. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is that like? Why does that fucking matter? People get really mad about like because a lot of the big budget movies do market towards now i will say i don't like when they're marketed towards china and because of that like they do different things like in top gun um maverick which was my yeah. favorite movie of last year yeah. they clearly were impl implying that the bad guy was china but like because they wanted to sell it to that you know market they're like the bad guys are random fucking group we've never heard of before, but it sure seems like the Chinese, you know, like I don't like when yeah. they tiptoe around things just because they're like, you know, oh, we, we, yes. we are, we're afraid to offend them, you know, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, like just whatever. But that's a fun one. But the, 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 the I think it is a um, I think it's a Mexican movie too. I think it was made in Me like by uh, Mexico or by Mexican filmmakers. That uh, uh, that Mexican um, uh, shark movie looked a little more serious, but like yeah. fun. Yes, because I liked I liked the the tone to it of like him going out there for like the research or whatever he had to do, and then they get trapped out there because like who doesn't love a good go somewhere and get trapped by either a fucking snake, a crocodile, a shark, piranhas. Uh, it's called the black demon, by the way. Yes, um, the black demon. It's funny you bring that up. Cause like one of the last nights that I, uh, did, uh, have some drinks on, I was, uh, my Roku broke, uh, or oh. just wasn't working. And I had to watch just straight Blu-rays. Yeah. So I watched evil dead 2013 and, uh, yeah, you messaged me that night or we messaged each other. And then yeah. afterwards I watched the shallows and I was talking to Deanna and I was like, Deanna, I'm like, we got to find out. Uh, this is obviously the end of the night. I was like, we got to find another, uh, creature that you can be stuck and fighting against. And she was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, they always make money. Like they did the movie with the wolves and fucking, uh, uh Obi or uh Qui-Gon Jin uh yes <laughs> gray and then they did the shallows with the shark and then and then there's uh, there's uh the one with the bear and Leonardo DiCaprio I'm like you, the departed you, uh no the revenant or yes 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 I was like I'm like we just got to find another fucking creature 
you know, write a movie about, you know, man, one man or woman versus that thing. Hollywood loves that shit. We'll sell it. (laughs) Like do a fucking like do a, 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 a swarm of like rabid raccoons yeah or uh, like skunks i in my head i like even not like so sober i'm like what is left to do that would make you know they just did cocaine bear which was okay it wasn't uh, kind of a letdown to be honest but yeah like i was like man they're you know like you know what i'd like to see i I haven't seen now granted i apparently there's going to be some version of it in the meg but the meg is the star of the meg let's be clear uh i would like to see like a like a good old like Kraken or a uh, yes. like killer squid movie, you know? I would be totally down for a killer squid movie. I'm trying to think what else. Honestly, I I fucking hate snakes, but I wouldn't mind like the serious tone of like an anaconda. They're remaking it. Are they did you already tell me this? Mm-hmm. Uh I can Who's give you it? uh I don't know if it's gone into I don't think it's gone into production yet but uh let me see last update on the Anaconda remake burr, 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 burr. Anaconda movie remake Anaconda reboot will be directed by the unbearable weight of massive talent director which that movie's fucking awesome so that's good news uh Tom Gor- Gormican a yep. new version of Anaconda is, is in development at Sony Pictures with the director of the Nicolas Cage film uh and that's pretty much and that was updated two months ago so yeah that's still in development and i'm absolutely fucking here for it um we'll see how it goes i'm here for it too what was that one i don't know if you said it and i just didn't hear it but what was that one with the the lion that was just with idris elba yeah uh that's called beast so, I, I mean, like, I, we need more of that. Like, we need to think of more woodland creatures, more... Isn't Arachnophobia getting remade, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you like... And coming out fairly soon, I think, too. See, I, I'm not I'm not afraid of spiders, but, like, I'll go see it. Because it's Arachnophobia. Uh, well, I... They don't get me like snakes do, but I know people, like, at that movie is their, like, kryptonite of movies you know like that movie is like they will not watch it like it's like to to them it's the scariest movie that's ever existed um i just hope that if they do it it's so easy to like go and same for anaconda it's so easy to lean into like humor with it i'm like i kind of want to see you present it serious like you know like granted i mean the you can be over the top like Anaconda was or I mean, fucking John Goodman is so good in arachnophobia. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah, it can be over the top or you can have a character that's over the top. I just don't want it to be like all like grab ass, you know, like, like, let's, like, let's, let's be real about it. Let's try and actually make a a, a fun kind of scary, you know, uh, movie. Cause especially with arachnophobia with, with it being one of the most common fears on the planet, you can really scare the fuck out of some people. So with that being said, my my kid, she's terrified of spiders. And you will not believe this goddamn story. So I'll always, like, get her, like, washcloth and her towel for, you know, nighttime routine. And we were prepping for Cinco de Mayo. So she went into the bu- the basket and grabbed it herself. Mm-hmm. And she's in the shower. And my friend Pat and I were, like, making churros. We are making churros the night before. Okay. And I, I went up to show him, like, my, my skincare stuff that I had because we were comparing and I hear this blood curling scream and we were I just showed her scream six so I mm-hmm. thought she was trying to pretend like something was happening and being dramatic yeah. and that scream went from like I thought it was a, a kidding and it was like ah, like high pitch and then it was like screaming crying mom a, a spider like this nasty ass black spider was on the washcloth and it fucking stung her oh wow it, it, it bit her and she's like our fear of snakes is her fear of spiders. That girl. <laughs> oh, trauma right there. Fucking traumatized. And I'm like, I didn't. I, so I ran in and she, and it was red and you could see like the puncture wound and it was in the, the tub because Greg killed it. I'm like, could you imagine if like a snake dropped? Oh, you, you know what I mean? Like putting myself in her fucking shoes. And so now I have to like 
I have to pull out the washcloth and I have to shake it in front of her. <laughs> I get it. I mean, I, this didn't happen to me, but this was mentioned in passing and I never forget it. And almost every shower I'd say I take to this day, I think about it. Mm. Um, I used to have, uh, well, not used to, uh, my dad's best friend, uh, his name's Bob. And mm -hmm. Bob uh, told us, uh, told me a story one time about, he's like, yeah, my, I think he, is his sister or his cousin i don't know he's like yeah she had a pet snake and she would like uh she would uh put it in the bathtub with her and she would shower with it and he's like and one time uh you know the someone else in the house or whatever like got in the shower and was showering and then like she they looked up and the snake was like stuck to the ceiling and then it just dropped on them so who oh knows God. if and it, it could just be like a story of like, you know, Bob fucking with me or whatever. But to this day, like I think about it, like almost every time I look up at the ceiling and I'm like, there better not be any fucking snake up there. <laughs> That's like my most like that, one of my most rational fears is sitting on the goddamn toilet and getting bit by a snake. Yep. That came to up the toilet. Toilet snake. Oh, uh, <laughs> see that. Now make that. And I watch that a fucking snake that just goes up toilets and kills people. I would argue, I bet you that. Well, first of all, it did happen in Snakes on a Plane. Uh, it bit the I guy. In the, it bit the guy in the dick. Uh, <laughs> it's super like over the top and kind of in that realm of like, all right, man, we're we're not trying to be serious here, but yeah, uh, yeah it, it climbs out the toilet. And uh, if I recall, the guy's talking to his dick, and he's like, "You're a big boy, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then the fucking snake like, bah! like rips his fucking dick off. <laughs> I mean, that's funny, but yeah. ew, gross. Uh, um, yeah. You know what they're remaking too? I just have to throw this in because I'm so goddamn angry about it, and I don't care. Everyone can come for me. I just don't give a shit anymore. I'm pissed. Do you know which one I'm talking about? No. Jawbreaker. They're remaking Jawbreaker. Guess who's in it? Jenna Ortega. Yep. <laughs> Fucking, and she's playing. Uh, what's her name? Courtney. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Deanna just had to show me that there's a plush, a big stuffed animal of a, you know, the dinosaur chicken nuggets. Yes. It's supposed to, it's like a dinosaur chicken nugget, big stuffed animal. I don't know. I don't know. She's drinking right now. So she's having fun. Sorry. So, you, so that means you need to order that for her right now. <laughs> uh, probably after this. Yeah. Uh, um, anyway, uh, I, I'm sorry. Let's, nope, let's, let's, let's go back about two minutes. Jawbreaker. And yes, obviously it's going to have Jenna Ortega. I told you she's getting overexposed in the genre. Uh, it's it, pretty soon here. People are going to start going, you know, what? fuck her. Like I'm tired. I'm already tired of her. I'm tired of her too. Beetlejuice too. She's in that. Who? Of course she is. Of course she is. And I was like, why are we doing this? And then Olivia Rodrigo or whatever her name is, that singer that sings that I can't stand her too. I think that she's so overhyped. And I think, I think she, she sings the song that I like. <laughs> the, uh, uh, Good for you. you. <laughs> yes. I, I do like that song, but I like the I like the guy version. There's a, a rock band version of it, but I do like that song. <laughs> yes, and it, I mean that's that song's okay, but everything else I just don't understand the hype around her. I think she's, I just don't get it. So she's in it, and who else was in it? Someone else, and I, um, automatically I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" I mean, Jawbreaker on the surface of it, I can understand remaking that movie because while it was a People of our age obviously remember it. I don't think it was that success. Oh, wow. It actually lost money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't a big hit. But I mean, the premise is pretty sound. But it was I I'm so sick of fucking Jenna Ortega. It was a cult classic for me. Like, I love that movie. And I watched that was like on the regular for me. I loved that movie. It was so dark. And I love Rose McGowan. Um, and I love Rebecca Gayhart because I loved her from Urban Legends. I like, you know, she's. She killed somebody. <laughs> she killed someone? Uh, if I'm thinking of the right person, I'm like 99% certain that she killed somebody. Yep, she definitely killed somebody. Um, I remember because I, she was in a show that I really liked uh, called um, Dead Like Me on yep. Showtime. Yep. And then they like really weirdly like wrote her off like really abruptly. And it was like, what? the fuck happened there and then uh yeah she uh she ran somebody over with a car and killed him uh 
Anyway, sorry to ruin your. Sorry to bring that up. Caitlyn Jenner did that too, apparently. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, I think that sort of uh, ended her career for the. I know she's been in a few things since then, but I believe that that pretty much put the yeah. Uh, Was she wasted? Uh, I don't want to speak. Uh, I don't want to get sued. <laughs> So we're gonna say maybe because okay. <laughs> I don't know I don't remember the actual I'm looking at the article here, uh, but she uh, she 100 uh, percent yeah I don't know <laughs> God damn it Rebecca Gayhart yeah. I mean I I just it's one of those movies where it's just a personal thing like Jaws if anyone ever tried to remake that movie I'm automatically just gonna hate it no matter what. And I feel like Jawbreakers like that for me because I feel like it's such a good movie. And like you said, it's a good it's a good storyline. But like, do something different with evil girls. Like, you don't have to fucking redo Jawbreaker. Like, you uh, don't need it. I, I guess I get that. Uh, uh, also, uh, it doesn't say about that, but it was a nine year old. Uh, anyway, um, she killed a fucking nine year old. Yeah. Um, I yeah I I get it, but I. I guess because I don't have the atten- the the attachment to Jawbreaker that I think Jawbreaker really resonates more with women, which makes sense. Yes. I do enjoy it. It's a good movie. Yes. Um, but uh, I think Jawbreaker to me seems like the perfect kind of movie to remake because it wasn't successful, but had a good premise. Uh, you just it's hard to say. Like, I think because. I think of that. And then I also think of you remember that movie Sugar and Spice, that fucking dumb movie. <laughs> Oh my god! Where, where they where they dress up as the cheerleaders who they put the fucking like the the plastic masks on and they rob banks. Yes, I do remember that one. Yeah, I kind of put those in the same category. A jawbreaker is like so much better, but it, like <laughs> I, I like it. It would be a good twofer if you're gonna have like a a movie night. Yes, I'm just I I had to look at this. Wow! Holy shit! Like. are you reading are you reading the rebecca gayhart thing yeah yeah she 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 paid for the funeral and everything like jesus christ yeah I I, i did not know that my mind is kind of blown right now yeah you okay buddy oh hey come here Sorry, he's wheezing no. for some reason. Oh, God. You okay? He might just have a reverse sneeze. He does that sometimes. I know. Well, if he does that and I'm like, <laughs> I, I catch myself. I always, are you okay? <laughs> and he just looks at me like, Meh. Um. Anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm more open to a remake on that, but I just. I am Jenna Ortega out. It's so like, isn't it crazy that I believe if I'm correct, when we did our episode with Dewey pod monster, the, the Dewey, the Dewey pod monster boys, yep. they were the ones who broke the news to me about Beetlejuice too. And they were like, and guess who's the lead actress. And I think we were both like collectively, we're like, it's obviously going to be Jenna Ortega. And he's like, how'd you fucking guess? And then you yeah. just did the same thing with job. It's so obvious. Like, they're just casting her and anything remotely related to horror or, uh, you know, or the darker or, or, side. Yeah. Or that niche side. And it's just like, you know, put her in it. And it's like, I don't know. I like her in scream, but I don't need her in every fucking movie about, uh, uh, uh you know, we need a, someone in their twenties to play in a horror movie or a, uh, or an, uh, you know, a, a niche movie. Oh, well, fucking let's call her up and we'll put her in black stripes and we'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> and, it, and it'll be perfect. And you know what too? So with that being said, there's, there's two things that I wanted to say to that Two, The, or the first one is I heard that she's not going to be in scream seven because of Beetlejuice. There was a rumor going around and I don't know if it's still a, a, a big one, but for a couple days, it was like, she's going to, she can't be in it because she has the obligations of, Beetlejuice to film and the um, who are the guys that do Scream? Um, uh, I don't remember the production company's name, but but they said they weren't going to wait for her because they have to produce the movie 
And I was like, how? She it, The whole movie's about the two sisters. <laughs> And it, what I'm thinking is if they if there was any truth to it, that they're just going to say that she moved and it's going to be completely centered around Sam. I mean, Something that's like, fine. Sam's more important in the long run. Right. And then so that one, I was kind of like, that would be interesting because how would people react to that? And then so, um, oh, my God, what movies was she in? But, you know, the girl that played in Black Phone, the the, um, the sassy the, sister, the like the little the little girl. Yes. Uh, she. I don't. I don't know. I know she just won an award from Fangoria for best supporting actress, but and she has like an older sister that looks like her, and she's been in horror movies too. I can't think of what she was in. I'm blanking out. But like, why don't you cast girls like that in horror movies? There's girls that can play evil. What about Madeline McGraw? Yes. Or Madeline McGraw. She has a sister. Uh, yeah. Well, Madeline the... McGraw doesn't have it's... a Wikipedia page, so I can't help you. <laughs> It's a chick for Megan. Her her sister, the little sister, is the the girl that played in Megan. The main and character in Megan. Wait, are these the same? Are they twin sisters? They're they're. I don't know if they're twins, but they're sisters. Because Mad wait is Madeline McGraw in Megan? I uh I don't know if Madeline McGraw because this Black looks Cone. like the same exact person. They're sisters, yeah. And I don't know which one's older and which one's younger. And I don't know the other chick's name, but I know one's in Megan and I know one was in Black. Oh, Hall. no. Yeah, one's named Violet and one's name. Okay. They look almost fucking identical, but uh, yeah, okay. So, like, cast wh whoever the older one is, cast them in, like, a teen movie about high school. You know what I mean? Like, get Well, she's, she's 12. Damn it. <laughs> so... <laughs> so so maybe she's not quite ready to play to play those roles yet. Yeah, horrible example, but like get other girls that could like Lauren Lavera, put her in fucking Jawbreaker. I'd like to see, yeah. See, and there you go. That's and that's a that's a what do you call it? Uh, I'm not. I keep saying nostalgia. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, what would that type of movie be? Uh, you said the word earlier, and I'm just spacing on it. Like a satire? No. Uh, well, cult classic, cult classic. Yeah, that is a cult classic movie. Putting Laura Lavera in it would be a great move because Laura Lavera is basically a. I mean, granted, she is an actress, but she's pretty much going to be. She's defined by her cult status of Terrifier Two. Now, she would be a great person to put in there. People would love that, and even put her as Courtney. Put, put her as Courtney Shay. Put her as the evil version because she's the final girl, and she's like you know the girl that dominated and took down art for, for the most part, put her as like the mean girl. Yeah. And what, Cause I think she would be perfect for it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not familiar enough with thank God. Cause that'd be weird if I was, but like of young actresses out there right now. Yeah. Um, that can like, I don't really have a favor. I do. I guess I like Melissa uh, Barrera. Um, yep. Cause I think she's good in scream and I liked her in, in the Heights and she's got some other horror movie coming out. I think I like her. But For her in it, like I would, comp I would r much rather have a, a a broader scope of the horror females that are like not Mia Goth. Don't put her in Jawbreaker. Don't no. put Jenna Ortega. No. Um, I'm kind of like them out, like those two. I just don't want to see them in any more horror at all. I'm not. Oh, you know who I like? I like Florence Pugh. Put oh my god, put her Florence Pugh, Lauren Lavera, like get a, a mix of amazing females can i and, say this i don't like mia goth i don't either so cheers no i think she's i ready i think she's severely like i don't want to say she's boring but i don't understand the hype in in the whole pearl x um i i don't get that i don't get infinity pool she shows more range in pearl i i mean i can't deny it yeah but at the same time, in most of her movies, like I, I just like I, like you said, boring is what I feel like. I feel like she's the, the, the aura she gives off is like if I was going to cast like a role in a movie where, uh, you know, it's like we need um uninterested and no personality model. Yes, like that's what I feel like. I'm like, uh, like there's no personality there. Like I don't care. And, and to me, if you're going to be like a horror icon, especially if you're probably going to be a female, you need some fucking personality to make you stand out among the greats. I mean, you need yeah. like 
otherwise you're just forgettable and boring. I mean, think about Nancy, like, you know, like all these, even stranger things, look at all the fucking great female characters in those, in, in just that TV show. They're all memorable. I don't give a shit about any movie she's in. Cause she's boring as fuck. That's funny. You say stranger things because what's her name? Sadie. Fink ex- that play- phenomenal. She's in- no, but she's in jawbreaker. She's casted in there. She's it- if you look up Jawbreaker remake right now, they'll show it shows Jenna Ortega. I don't know Olivia. how old she is, so I'll have to look that up. Because even like Millie Bobby Brown, I wouldn't mind her p- being a mean girl because we see her as eleven. We'll see here. I, I she, I th- I feel like she's being more selective. The only other thing I've, I saw her in Godzilla, which I liked her in Godzilla, and then she's yep. in the the Enola Holmes movies, and those are actually pretty good. I like those. Yep. Uh, Jawbreaker remake. Jo- Wait, it's a TV show. Wait, no. Oh, God. Wait, Jawbreaker TV series? No. Oh, God. And, and then they're making it into a TV series for what? What is the purpose? And that makes me even more annoyed that they're turning it into a goddamn TV show because we don't need. I think like, this is. Wait, is there a movie? Because, okay, according to this. What the f- Fuck? It could honestly be a TV show. I just saw someone post it on TikTok and it really fucking pissed me off. So I was not happy about that. Jawbreaker TV series in the works at E. Oh, God. I'm surprised they haven't cast a Kardashian in it. I, sh- I shouldn't say that because they fucking will. And no. then I'll truly lose my shit. We'll have to see, but that's that's kind of weird. Um, like they well, cast Kim K in American Horror Story, and that pisses me off too. Yeah, and you got to take it when that sucks. But I get like, and that's also why they're casting Jenna Ortega because right now she's at the height of her popularity, and yes. by casting someone like her over a Laura Lavera, they're guaranteeing that they're going to get you know um, teenage boys to go see the movie, as well as some adult men who I would say. Maybe we should check on them. Um, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> yeah. There's people who are like really into her. And I'm like, that's if she, Dial it back. Dial it back. She, Cause I know she, I, like she plays college student scream, but she looks like she's fucking 12. Okay. Ex- <laughs> exactly. But like also too, it's just also, and I'm not trying to be mean, but I feel like there's a lot of, uh, if they're in it and it's like a successful movie, then the, like they're praised as like, you know, like the best thing. And and honestly, too, like Jenna Ortega, for me, and a lot of them, are, I feel like she's the same person in each movie that I see. Pretty much. So. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, like, I, I haven't, yeah. there's, it, it, she's, she's the hot thing right now, but she is becoming stretched. She's getting cast in too many big things, I feel like. And good for her. I mean, honestly, if you're going to make the money, do it while you can. Because eventually this wave is going to end. And I think, I'm telling you, I'm going to see. I bet you there will be. I won't even. There's probably already going to be memes coming out around Beetlejuice. Where people are going to be like, oh, guess what? You know, the the we're making a movie about, you know. And we need a, a, a weird, creepy fucking girl in the movie. Like, here's the thing. And I'll tell you this right now. I know they just made a sequel to it, but I've heard rumors that they're going to remake the craft. If they fucking stick her in as Nancy, oh, you motherfuckers. Because they get, you know that's who they cast. I guarantee you that's who they cast. You, Mark, you, you said it, and we will revisit it when it happens. She will be in that fucking movie. Oh, and she'll be Nancy. She will not be the like the good girl. They'll make her the most popular character in that movie, the one that everybody remembers. She'll be fucking Nancy. And and it's just it's for me, it's like I just I, I it's so annoying. It it's such a turnoff. It makes me like because like like if it was casted differently, I'm, I would be excited for it. You know what I mean? Like if, if you did justice to the casting, then I would be excited for it. Like evil dead. A lot of people, mm-hmm. like you said, you made a valid point. A lot of people loved it. And a lot of people were upset because the people loved it because it was different. And you had Jane Levy mm-hmm. that fucking destroyed it. Like she was oh, so good. Perfect for Mia. And then you had the people that, you know, wanted the original storyline. I like the change up. I did. I like and I, it's better. I actually like it better than, the, than all of the others. <laughs> and I love Evil Dead. I love the franchise, but I enjoyed that one better. And I will say that. Like, it's number one in my ranking of the franchise. But like. But it took I, time. I will say it took time for me to, to get there. 
Yeah. The first time I watched it, I wasn't super into it. I was kind of like, eh, you know, and I, I, it took, you know, a rewatching and rewatching to then I was like, I like this movie. And then I was like, I fucking love this movie. And then it wasn't until within the last year or two that I was like, this is the best one. Like, yeah. This is the best one. <laughs> Uh, it would be, and this is me being petty, it would be perfection for me if they would have took the whole killing grandpa out of it. I hated that, and I always fast forward it. I'm with you, because honestly, it doesn't really do anything in the whole movie. I I, it, I get that it's it makes it like... I fast forward it through, too. You know what I mean? I get what they're trying to do. It makes it edgy, like, she'll fucking... It doesn't matter. She'll kill the family dog called Grandpa. I get yeah, that. Yeah, and I think it, it it's also the red herring that... um the dude is the main character, you know, cause that's when he kind of has his like, I'm going to arm myself fucking now I'm going to fight this fight. And you know, which is a great red herring by the way. It is. Yes. Yeah. But I just, I don't even know what tangent I was just going on for that. Sorry. No, it's okay. I just, I lost my train of thought, but I'm sure it was bitching about Jenna Ortega and like the same cast of girls. And don't get me wrong too. Like the, 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 picture of Winona playing Lydia Dietz got me super excited to see it because I was like that's awesome because Beetlejuice is huge for me like I watched it so much when I was a kid so I'm excited that she's back but like that Jenna Ortega is that lingering booger that just I, I want to like flick off because I just don't even care like I I'm don't like, even want her to be a focal point of Beetlejuice too and I think she's just going to play Lydia it's just going to be Lydia too. Like I, I can't I, I can't predict that she's gonna go in. She's gonna be Wednesday mm -hmm. in that movie. That's what I bet you it's gonna be. It's gonna be Wednesday just in that movie. Yes. Um and here's a I like all right, and I think we, we we'll we'll probably close up here soon on this part because we're coming in at two hours. Yes. Um I have a question for you what that I think is a good one to end this. You're a big Beetlejuice fan. I like Beetlejuice. Everybody around our age likes Beetlejuice. Do we really want Beetlejuice too? I, I'm like, ex okay. Well, there's the kicker. Is it's nice to get finally get a sequel, but do we have to have the sequel during the time that Jenna Ortega is so big that we have to cast her? Because I think that's just it. Just loses the the appeal to me because I. I don't want to see a Wednesday version of Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. So I think that for me, I'm like, I was excited when I saw that it was happening and Michael Keaton's coming back. And uh, what's her name? Um, oh, uh, Catherine O'Hare. Yeah, she's coming back and Winona Ryder. But then when it was like Jenna Ortega casted, I was like, I don't fucking care. Like, I just I didn't know Catherine O'Hare is coming back. If Catherine O'Hare is in it, that might be the that might push me over the edge. I might go see it then. I the love Catherine O'Hare. That will be my saving grace because the three of them coming back, that's I'll, I'll watch it, but it just throws that, that sour taste in my mouth where I just don't care. But the, the, the positive side is that a new generation of kids and people are going to watch it because of her. So whatever. <sighs> and I get, and I'm, I'm with you on it. I, I get all that. I'm going to be, I'm going to take a harder stance on it. I'm going to say, I don't give a fuck. Like no. I love, I mean, everybody loves Beetlejuice. I do. I, here's the thing. I don't give a shit about anybody in Beetlejuice besides Beetlejuice, Lydia, no. and all of the people that were in the house in the first one, the fat guy, yeah. he's dead though. So we can't do anything with him. Yeah. Um, and the other guy's a child molester so we can't do anything with him <laughs> no nope, can't have him <laughs> um so really it's Catherine o'hare uh but i also like i the time to make the sequel would have been like you know ghostbusters ghostbusters 2 it should have been like when Thank lydia you. was a couple years older yes coming back when lydia's goddamn almost 60 eh, don't know if i and by the way if she's okay no maybe she's 50 uh if she's 50 how fucking old is Michael Keaton? Granted, I know he puts on makeup and he's a dead guy, but whatever. Like, or and like he's making his grand comeback as Batman. So yeah. Like he's making his rounds of like, let me just portray this character so I can make money. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm just, I don't really, so I don't want to see Beetlejuice interact with 
another person like clearly this is going to be lydia 2.0 uh he's 71 years old by the way um i don't want to see her interact interact with anyone but lydia because i don't care and also i don't want to see him interact with 50 year old lydia that just it sounds awful it's weird Um, and then it just to go with it and then i guess i'll turn the the care that they've given this franchise which is a one movie and a cartoon series yeah. Over the years, is do you know what the, the 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 original concept for part two was? Which I I swear to God, I hope, I pray, I pray with every ounce of my being that this is the script and they reworked it and made it into this this one. Because I oh my god, I can't wait. Do you know what it was? Do you know what the title of it was? No, I don't. Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian. <laughs> that is the legit <laughs> script title. This is not hearsay this is a hundred percent confirmed that the sequel was written and was being pitched and was like almost went into production on beetlejuice goes hawaiian where they go on a hawaiian vacation and beetlejuice comes along and some wacky hijinks (laughs) in a fucking like floor like hawaiian shirt uh Uh, kevin smith told the story many times he's like they my first, you know, originally he's like after like I did Clerks and Mall Rats, he's like they uh, wanted me to do a um, like a like not an original movie, like a movie that like someone else wrote and gave to yeah. him. And he's like yeah. the first two that he said the first two things they pitched me. He's like they're like you like comic books. He's like I do, and they're like, well, we're thinking you could maybe work help us on the bat or the Superman movie, or you could help us on Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. And he of course he chose Superman, and that but he's like. But let me take a fucking look at this Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian <laughs> script. Like, let me see that real quick. Yeah, let, let me see this real quick. But you know what? That would have worked. What? What? Wait, would that have worked? <laughs> that would have worked if it was like, like you said, two years after Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah. Because of that wacky, like um, the Adams family, when when uh, uh, that whole like the, the two and what's her name came into it, and like you know, it was Fester's kind of like deal in that one. I think that it could have worked. Joan Cusack. Yes, in a in a wacky way. At the very least, it would have been the characters that we, you know, associate with the movie and, yeah. you know, reprising their roles, uh, you know, only within a relatively short period of time. Now we're just the only I guess the saving grace on this is we're not getting a remake yet because in our lifetimes, if we live to be our our average expected life expectancies, we probably will see a remake of this where they'll have like Timothy Chalamet play fucking Beetlejuice because he's playing Willy Wonka, <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. doing the the origin story of Wonka, and it's like it just, I, because I that promise movie... you, it's been pitched to Johnny. Well, now he's sort of on the outs because of the whole Amber Heard thing. Nobody wants to cast him, but yeah. I bet you, I promise you, I bet you, it's been pitched to Johnny Depp before. And see, like his his take on like the whole Charlie thing, I, I I might be like the I hated it. I thought it was the stupidest fucking take on it. I hated all the music. I hated his star cloud or love cloud. Or... Came off kind of molestery. Yes, and it came off so like super weird. Like I watched that movie baked out of my mind, and it still didn't make sense. And I'm like, this is not right. <laughs> like this does not make any sense and i think it was kind of a kick in the dick to willy wonka because willy wonka is like willy wonka beetlejuice ghostbusters were super huge parts of my childhood and i just feel like that no no and no and ghostbusters afterlife is that weird one that that hit the mark because the casting podcast the 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 kid the girl that played Egon's granddaughter. Oh, it's 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 the way Perfection. to do. It's a, it's the proper way to do a a uh, a passing of the torch for a franchise. Yes. You pay homage to the original while setting up new characters. I would say, I like like I I hate to say it, but like again, Scream is not about Sydney anymore, and I'm okay with that now. Like yeah. these, they they've set these characters up. Although apparently one of them is gonna go fuck off to go play around with fucking Beetlejuice. But uh, don't quote me because that was like the buzz <laughs> that people were and people like big people like not like actors but like big people were talking about how it was buzzed in like that community that they weren't waiting for her and that she was going to be written out of the script. And I was like, that's some fucking tea. Yeah, that's that's asinine i mean the whole 
the only movie of hers that I like, of course, that'd be the one that take writer out of. <laughs> and um, I, I loved her in six because as I've said to you, and I think I haven't told you since we've recorded, but I love six now. <laughs> I oh, like we, you've seen it. Like you saw it like five times in theaters. I did. And I watched it with Roz and I loved watching her reaction to like the latter scene. She thought it was so sad, like not like traumatizing to her, but when she hit the, when he shook her off, she was like, no. Yep. And she was like, I liked her, but she's like, that scene was awesome. The subway scene. She freaked out. She thought it was so well done. Like, and then did you see how close she was to the TV screen? Oh, I remember the, 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 the video. Like that was such a proud moment, but I just, well, that scared me that I watched it with her and I was just like, I really think I just was an asshole about this. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I really, I, I, I enjoyed it more on my second viewing. I still liked it when the first one, I just, I do wish that I wish there was honestly, if Gail had gotten it, it would have been fine. Would've if been one better. person big would have died, I think I would have been. And that okay. name starts with the G and ends with an ale. It, yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and Chad or Kirby. I, Kirby. Definitely. Fuck it. Kirby was irrelevant. Uh, but we, we we did three and a half hours on that. We don't need to get back into that. No, but yes, that, that would have been solid, like that would have been good. But yes. Um. All right, Jordan. I think we should end uh this recording because we got another one. We're gonna line up after this. Well, do you? I wanted to ask you. Do you want to do so? Like we have this one. This is a good two hours. Do we want to do our live next week? So then we have like an episode, and then we can record Monday of next week. Or are you busy? Monday. No, no, that that works too. So if you want to call it here, we can do that now and just do that then. And we discussed a couple movies that we want to watch, so that gives us time to prep for that, and then we can kind of like do that, and then maybe like another segment thing that we can come up with and record Monday because I'm totally I mean, free. I own Crossroads on DVD, so that would be <laughs> that would be fine. I gotta find where to stream it because I think probably Amazon. But let's let's do that because I think this is a good episode. Okay, and then we can. Um. Yes. All right. Well, that's fair. Okay. Well, then do we want to do our sign offs then? Yeah, we'll do that, and then I'll t we'll talk after. Okay. Uh. So, um, that was a really fun chatting. Getting back into it again. The hiatus sucked, but we're in the clear now, so it's gonna be balls to the wall. Episodes coming out. Lives. I'm excited. In your fucking face. In your face. <laughs> In your fucking face! <laughs> <laughs> In your face! Um, uh, so, yeah. So, we're going to do a live next week. We will announce that. Um, and we will... I love doing the lives. I have so much fun when we do the lives. The lives are fun. Um, and eventually, I have that idea for a very fucking weird live. But I want to do that eventually. <laughs> yes. We have things up our sleeves. Um, cool. Other than that... Um, Anything else you want to talk about or plug or anything like that? Nope. Just uh, make sure you tune in to see when we are going to announce what day and what time we're doing the live and just happy to be back with you guys. So thank you for listening to us rant for two hours and we will catch you on the next one. Yep. And follow us uh, for, if you ever want to stay up to date with us, um, follow whether you're listening to us here or on YouTube um, our primary uh, source of uh, in information will be is Instagram, but also Jordana runs a badass TikTok. I just started getting into it, so you can also uh, so follow <laughs> us on TikTok, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, but follow us, like, rate, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. <laughs> I'm just thinking of your movie <laughs> guesses, and you're like. Would you say fire up your ass? <laughs> oh, yeah. I Yeah, that one. Or like, I think I said like vampire period or something. Uh, you said, I'm scared of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, either way, uh, like, <laughs> rate, subscribe, share, do, tell all your friends, do whatever. Send us wherever you annoy your friends with it. We just want to keep doing this for you guys. It's super fun. And um, that's all I got. Yes. Yeah, so same what he said. And we will see you next time. Later. Good night. Quack, quack.